morning. Welcome to the first installment of something that will be happening on the first of every month from now on, which is that I will be answering the questions that you, my loyal viewers, ask me. Uh, I plan on keeping the answers relatively brief because a lot of the questions could be the subject of their own heck off commie or their own uh, let's talk about it because those are different. For those of you that are paying attention to the set changes, I did bring the mic down to try and keep this audio quality as uh, not atrocious as possible, so let's just send it. First question, do you believe that groups like Nazis and the KKK should be allowed to express themselves in America? Yes, I do, absolutely. For a few reasons. Um, firstly, we have this thing in this country that's pretty unique, which is a God-given right to free speech that is reinforced by the First Amendment of our Constitution. And obviously there are limitations to this, such as you can't incite panic in a crowded place, stuff like that. Um, it's not protected, but hate speech doesn't exist. There is no court case that affirms the existence of hate speech regarding limitations on the First Amendment. And there was actually a case that dealt specifically with the, with the Nazis National Socialist Party of America versus Skokie, Illinois, and basically the Nazis wanted to do their Nazi thing in a public demonstration. In a Jewish community, Skokie gave them a hard time about it, went to the Supreme Court, and the court sided with the Nazis. Of course, that's very watered down, but it's definitely one of the more important precedents to know, um, especially in relation to the First Amendment. So if you're interested, you can definitely read through it in greater detail online. Uh, that aside, I don't like Nazis, don't like Klansmen, but what I fear is that when the left goes out of their way to silence the speech of these people who only exist in maybe like a few thousand, it almost gives them a platform in a way because then they can say, oh, look at us, they're trying to shut us down because they don't want you to know the truth of what we're saying. And then like th that's what draws the national attention, that's what draws in the media. Um, if they're just allowed to speak their message, people are going to realize that it's stupid and not pay attention, which is why they only have like a few thousand um, but it's just like a bunch of old, bitter people that they're just growing up being indoctrinated by it. So it's only when you try to shut it down that they can be perceived as having some sort of validity outside of their identity politics. Next question. How can we combat mass shootings when it's still legal to own guns? Um, I went to an anti-gun protest at this university in October and for some reason the footage just won't cooperate. I tried to upload it. Uh, it just keeps crashing my computer. I have no idea why, but I was speaking with this woman for like a half hour and I asked her a question that's somewhat similar to this in format and she just did not have an answer because it really is the key in this whole debate. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to try and play the clip right now. Government says this is a mental health issue and then cuts funds to mental health resources. It, it's a little contradictory and a little worrisome um, because if it is such a mental health issue, then we should be doing it. Do you think it is a mental health issue or more of a gun issue? I think it's both. Obviously, one doesn't exist without the other. Someone that's like perfectly sane doesn't just go and murder people without the, without the the um, element of needing to defend themselves. I guess I'm wondering, because the AK-47 has been around since 1947, and the AR-15s have been around since the late 50s. You just be able to uh, buy them from, like, the Sears catalog that mail them right to your house. But we didn't really have these mass shootings until, like, people from my generation, your generation, like the late 90s, early 2000s, just started committing these atrocities. So I'm guessing if the guns have always been the constant variable, what do you think changed? What do I think changed? What do I think changed? That is honestly a good question. Let me think about that. That's the thing, we've always had the guns, always, but mass shootings are relatively new. So since the guns are the constant variable, you can't blame the mass shootings on the guns because if it truly was because of the guns, these would have been occurring at the same frequency for the last 100 years, even longer. So uh, that tells us something else changed within the culture to compel people to want to commit these atrocities. And banning guns is the equivalent of taking your teenage son's drug paraphernalia away from him, uh, in a sense, because actually, and I want you to think about what is the problem in that scenario? You find out your son is smoking marijuana and you take his pipe. The problem isn't that he was smoking marijuana. The problem is that he wanted to in the first place. So by taking his pipe from him, all you've done is temporarily restricted his ability to act on his intentions, but it's impossible to eliminate the supply of marijuana pipes. So unless you deal with the core problem that he wanted to use drugs in the first place, you'll never stop his using of drugs because he'll always find a way. The issue of mass shootings is exactly parallel to this, even down to the fact that it's typically adolescent men that are doing this or even older men. And I do have plans to break this down further in the future, but I'll leave you with some ideas uh, to research on your own that could answer your question sooner. The increase in single motherhood since 1970, the effects of single motherhood on young men, uh, more specifically the absence of father figures, the rise in social media and the effect that it has on men who self-identify as involuntary celibates, and also the psychology behind the biblical story of Cain and Abel. Um, I think that's a good place to start to get a deeper understanding of this rather than just ban the guns, which really is nothing more than just a knee-jerk solution. Last one. Do you or do you not see the irony in saying, I can't imagine being that possessed by an ideology, especially when <laughs> this is your set? That's funny. Um, 
<laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm, of course, biased, and I would certainly hope that I'm not an ideologue or that I'm not possessed by an ideology. And uh, the evidence that I have to support that claim would be that there have been times when my opinion on something has changed because I was presented with information that I did not have or that invalidated the information on which my previously held opinion was based. Typically though, just from my experience, and I don't want to sound conceited, but what tends to happen is that I'm the one that has the information that would invalidate the claims being made by others, though it's gone the other way a few times and I've kept an open mind because my allegiance is not to a set of ideas outlined by a party, it's to the idea of prosperity and virtue and I align myself with where I see those ideas being best represented. Luckily my intention of keeping these videos relatively short was easy to act on since I didn't get a ton of questions just because my channel is so small right now. But if you have a question that you'd like me to talk about next month, shoot me an email at officialcomradedoyle at gmail.com. Put question in the subject line and I'll take a look at it for next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. It's almost Christmas. I like Christmas.